YOLO composing gloves here. And today we're going to be checking out Orb Composer S. It is an AI that writes music. It is meant to serve as a composer's helper, sort of an idea generator, so to speak. And I just want to sort of show you around because I know when you see something like this, you're like, how good really is this? And so let me just demonstrate a little bit. So first off, I've already got the orchestral template in FL sort of mirroring the one they have in here. And it's I really recommend using the templates just because it, it's a lot of work to set them up. So I'm going to select orchestral and hit apply. And it loads up all these instruments. You need these to already exist because it's going to sort of generate music using these. So you're going to need to have these. And then it's almost magical. You just simply grab blocks of what you want. Now you can give it a melody and it can like do stuff with that melody. Uh, but you can just drag and drop. Now, every time you open a new project, it kind of randomizes these things up here. I'm going to change it to 4-4 four, four, C minor. You can always change this later and give it a BPM of 60. Just so we have a straightforward starting place. Now, you can try and have it generate all your song all at once. That is quite intense. I'm just going to do some basic stuff for now. So first, we need an intro. So we drag an intro. And it generates one. Like, there, there it is. This is like this. It says, this is going to be your intro. Now, density right here is basically how much is going on. So we could have it be like really low density. And I know it looks like there's more parts, but it's actually going to have like less notes, things like that. If we go high density, it'll be a lot crazier sounding. Let's just compare them. So here's 100%. That's, come on, that's dang crazy. And AI did that. Like, I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit beside myself. Because you can come in here and then touch it up. Like, you can come in. I mean, we would replace the sounds, obviously. Like, you could come in here and change the sounds out. I'm going to go to FL Studio for all that stuff. So I'm not worried about sound things. But they made it really accessible. They also added MIDI editing in this um, update. So I know that this was a commonly requested feature. So you're able to come and do a lot more in the and inside this program itself. But that's what's going on. Now, they have the block type. And right now we're on question and answer, but we can choose different ones. I really like what it spit out though. So I'm going to keep it. You can also change the chord progressions. You can come in here and, and select chords yourself. If you're sort of a chord wizard and already know what's going down, or you could come in and you can get to that same menu here, by the way, on the side. And they have some already here, all your cadences and whatnot. So you can tidy up the ends. If you see something sort of weird, like a C minor seven, uh, to another C minor chord probably for the next block. That's kind of weird. So we might change this to like a G7 chord. But I'm going to leave it how it is. And anyways, yeah, you can come in here. They even have them like named like, ooh, danger. Like this one's going to be more dangerous sounding. That kind of a thing. We have our also, yeah, and just our blocks. So anyways, there's our intro. Great. I love it. Let's go ahead. Let's get a theme going. So we'll toss a theme down. And let's uh, have our theme. Let's just hear, hear what it came up with. Now, there's no clear way to zoom these in and out uh, immediately. But if you hold Control and scroll your mouse wheel, you can make room. So if you ever are like, oh, I need more room, Control scroll mouse wheel, that'll do it for you. And let's just set this here and hear what it thought of for a theme. It's very dramatic. So this is kind of strange, right? Diminished chords. So maybe we'll select a chord that makes more sense here. Also, we've left our C minor has gotten, we've got some strange places. So let's go ahead. Let's go into our chord progressions here. And let's go for, oh, uh, ooh, we got danger. Let's go for something. Ooh, we got evil. I don't think I want to go evil. 
And we have just standard chord progressions. Let's just go standard chord progression for now. Nothing, nothing nuts. All right, there we go. Let's hear it. Now let's say like, oh, I'm not quite digging this. We can come in here and just adjust it. It will basically change everything up. We probably need to pick a different progression based on what we had going before. Let's go for something like this. I say, oh, I want something different. You can just literally move the line like a touch and bam, you get crazy different stuff. Some of these will be less, probably something you're gonna need to really fine tune. Others will be a lot closer to like a really good idea. So it's just one of those things where you just come in here, sort of fiddle with it a bit. We have some strange notes in here. Now, when strange notes like that occur, uh, you might be surprised. There's usually like one pattern that's sort of causing it. And we see these are caused, not caused. We see they are labeled by melody, chords, bass, and whatnot. So let's go ahead. And I suspect probably the motif one is the culprit. And so let's just mute that. And if there's an arpeggiation one, it's either this or the chords. It's one of those. Okay, so the motif one was definitely part of the sort of crazier notes going on. Sounds like some of the chord stuff might also be. So you can come in here, fine tune it. You can also, if you click on the individual patterns, you can change the density per clip, which is really useful. You can also change the role. So you can say, hey, instead of like being a chord deal, change to a melody block or change to an arpeggio block. And it will use a different algorithm to determine what it should write. We could bring our density way down and we could bring our space and sort of change this up with the hay. Oh, that was uh, interesting. Let's bring it all down. So you get the idea. Some things that you mess with, I find, for example, stuff like this, changing it to standard will often produce really interesting, very usable results. And just sort of, you know, you got to experiment a bit. We have intensity. This is basically like it tries to make it more, you know, more intense in the sense that, you know, the music is literally going to sound more intense. And... This will sometimes produce something that's amazing, and other times you're gonna to need to change it a bit. So there's some cool ideas in here, and you could lay this down, take pieces out in the MIDI, and create your whole your own whole thing from that. That's the way I sort of encourage you to use it at the time, just because. It's amazing for that. Like it does that like on an A plus level. So let's say that, okay, we've got our idea bed here and I'm only going to take a couple of these ideas and sort of use them to form the basis of my own thing. So let's go ahead, let's take these. And what you do is you go to file export MIDI and we're going to go to wherever you want. I'm going to go into documents. So this is orb MIDI. We're going to call this project two. And you should make a folder because it's going to do make two kinds of MIDI bounces. The first MIDI bounce will be all of the individual tracks as MIDI. The second one will be a master MIDI bounce, which will have everything together. Now we'll come into FL. And in FL, you're going to go to import MIDI file. Save changes. Now I don't care. And we're going to go to where that file was, which was in documents, project two. And we see here, we've got a couple of things in here. Here's all the individual ones. Where did it stick? The big one. There's the big one. So this is the one FL is going to want. It's not able to 
handle the drag and drop method like directly from an external window. Actually import, it might be able to, but it won't let you select multiple. So anyways, this is, this will work. So you click on the big one and it's going to say, Hey, do you want to import this? I do not want to start a new project. I do want to keep the time signatures. I don't want to add that to everything, create one channel. And I want to do it all, all of them. And it's going to create one channel per track. If this is off. It's going to put it all on the same track. You don't want that. So we're going to hit accept and it's going to go. Okie dokie. Here you go. Now that's a lot of windows to close. So just hit F12, then hit F5 to bring back the seat main sequencer. And okay, cool. So we have everything here. This is in general MIDI though. We play this. It sounds craziness. Also, the MIDI files tempo gets a little weird because MIDI bounces are strange. So we need to change this. To do that, you got to go to your current project, go into patterns, project two. You'll see a thing in here that automates the tempo. Because if you just try and change the tempo and you hit play, it goes right on back. And you say, ooh, I don't like that. So we're going to come in here. We're going to go to edit events. You right click on it. And in here, you're going to select the delete and make sure you delete the front of the clip goes away. Now you are free to change your tempo. There may be a way to just fix that from the front, but this is what I do when stuff like this happens. So, okay, cool. We've got all our, our sounds here and I want to take some of the cooler ideas and sort of just make my own thing. Now we could just do a one on one deal here. So for example, we have flutes. I could cut and paste the flutes in. Where are you, flutes? There's a flute. Let's just put you in there. And let's just solo it and hear it. I mean, that's just, the sounds are so important. That's, I mean, come on. That's pretty nice. So then we just come over and we start sort of mitigating, mitigating, migrating. You know what I mean? We're going to start bringing things over. So we have a harp. I've got a harp right here. Paste that in. I mean, we could just run with just that. We don't even need the other stuff and we could build out. I could build a whole thing just on that. Let's keep going just for the sake of seeing what we've got here. So this is the violas. So I'm going to take the violas. Now these, these viola patches I have in this one aren't really technically violas. It's just like an entire string ensemble. And it looks like this was only used in the second half. I didn't take my time and really make that something that I wanted to use directly. So I'm just going to sort of leave it be. We've got some tremolo. Now, one thing to notice is the velocities are really specific. It also gives you... I put the um, pattern down here. They've got like expression mappings and all kinds of stuff. So with your project, you're going to want to scale these to whatever library you're using. Let's just hear what they sound like now. So this is probably too loud for what's going on here. And also... It sounds like it's not velocity sensitive anyways. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in and just do the expression ourselves. This kind of stuff you need to do when you're writing music anyway. So it makes a lot of sense. And we would come in here and do some expression. That could be a really cool, beautiful thing to add. Let's uh, add the cello legato. So it makes sense to see to have something that mimics what you've got an orb composer so you can do this and really quick bring stuff over. I'm going to put the cello there. We've got a, oh, a spiccato cello. Do I have a spiccato on here? We've got violin sp spiccato. <laughs> we'll settle with that. Hopefully things are in the right range. We'll see. Bass clarinet legato. Bass clarinet right there. Bam. And we'll go for bass clarinet long. Sure. Bass clarinet. I think I have these backwards. Oh, well. Oh, man. Do they have brass? Tell me they've got some brass. Oh, they've got double basses on that. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Let's go. Where are you, you double basses? There you are. Put you in there. And violins. <laughs> Let's 
Let's just replace this, see what it does. You know what? I'm just going to stay with that. Sounds fine to me. We've got some more spiccato. I didn't go with any brass. Uh, we could have changed that with the density. I mean, we can change it now. We are now in control here. But anyways, you get the idea. So now what we can do is we can take this, put it in. And I recommend muting these afterwards. Right there, I would change the melody to be a little more of a, a little more similar to this, just because this sort of goes off into a, a strange direction to me. But I mean, we are cooking, we are ready to go. I've got the basis of a track, I've got a bunch of ideas, and away I can go. And that's basically why Orb Composer is cool because it does that, and you can see. It can do it pretty well. You just know what sort of things to go in, touch up, how to identify patterns that might be just a bit strange. Also, looking at chord structures. So if you have knowledge in music theory, this is going to be a lot easier to identify. If you don't, this will be a good way to sort of identify what could possibly make stuff go wrong. And so it's a great thing as a learning tool and also as an enabling tool, allowing you to sort of mess with things you may not have messed with before. Anyways, that's Orb Composer. If it's something that interests you, go ahead, check out the link in the description below. If you make something cool with it, be sure to drop it down in the comments. Subscribe and have a blessed day.